Well, hi, thanks for joining the TechSoup special webinar today, Accelerate Mission Delivery with DocuSign's Advanced Solution. I wanna welcome you to the TechSoup Network, especially for those of you who are new here. In today's webinar, our partners from DocuSign is gonna discuss how successful nonprofits are investing in new agreement technology that help them master the hybrid mission delivery environments, create positive client and member experiences, cut costs, and successfully secure funding revenue. I'm Aretha Simons, I'm the webinar producer here. Before we get started, I'm gonna give you a few housekeeping rules here. If you uh, would like to type in the chat room, feel free, but we would love if you would put your questions in the Q&A. We are recording this. This will be sent to you via email within 48 hours. If you need the closed caption, please just click on the CC button located in your Zoom menu. Look, that's all I got. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Kelly with, from DocuSign, and thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Aretha, for the warm welcome and for your positivity. So appreciate it. Um, speaking of positivity, I want to start off today with some gratitude, my favorite subject. First, gratitude for TechSoup and the team uh, putting this amazing uh, webinar together, as well as enabling our uh, NFPs to take advantage of a very significant discount to bring um, amazing technology uh, to the people you serve. Second of all, I want to give you gratitude for spending an hour today with myself and my team to learn about a technology that not only will make it easier for the members and the people you serve, but also save you time so that you can take more time to live out your mission and help others. That is why I do what I do on a daily basis. My name is Kelly Polino. I'm the regional vice president of our nonprofit division here at DocuSign. I have the pleasure of introducing my spectacular team today who have helped hundreds, uh, if not thousands of NFPs save time to give back and also help the members. Uh, I'm going to tell you a couple quick stories and then I'm going to turn it over to them uh, for what you came here to learn about today. Uh, but two of my favorite stories from the last several months is uh, first and foremost, we were working with a community action partnership who was giving heating and energy assistance to thousands. That heating and energy assistance application would take anywhere from seven days to 14 days for the people applying for that assistance to take advantage and even get back. We were able to speed up that process so that people were able to take advantage in 24 hours or less and were able to bring heating and um, and energy assistance quicker and faster. One of my favorite stories recently, we worked with uh, one of the Cerebral Palsy Foundations, worked with uh, one of the chief financial officers who became part of the organization because his son had cerebral palsy. He reached out to us and and, and enable DocuSign so his son, who could not hold a pencil, could feel more independence because he could do e-sign and he could click and he could do things on his phone that he wasn't able to. And it brought him the peace of mind to feel the independence that he so um, needed uh, to see. So today our goal is to allow you to save as much time as you possibly can because we know the challenges you face every single day. We know how stretched thin you are and how you wanna live out your mission. Um, before I do that and introduce my team, I'm gonna ask everybody a question. If we could give you five hours back in your work week, what would you do? If I could wave a magic wand, where would you spend those extra five hours? And as you're chatting in the chat, and please do love to hear where those five hours would be spent, I'd like to introduce my team. Uh, who we have first is Tucker Miner, uh, who will be speaking first and introducing uh, our time today. Next, we have Kim Olson. Uh, Kim, if you want to wave. And then finally, last but not least, we have Ben Crawford. Together, uh, my team has helped serve thousands of nonprofits. They've also brought in and helped such names as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Anti-Defamation League, uh, several others that you're very, very familiar with, um, live out their mission and give time back to 
their uh, volunteers so that they could live out the mission and help others. Uh, again, thank you for your time today. I will open it up to Tucker to take it away from here. Thanks, Kelly. Beautiful expository there. And, and Ben, if you don't mind sharing, beautiful. Thank you. And team, we want this to be an interactive conversation, so please leverage that Q&A or chat feature. Uh, we're going to be behind the scenes answering any of your questions directly. And then at the time, at the end of our meeting today, we'll have a Q&A session in which we'll give out some live responses as well. Uh, but Ben, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, kind of highlighting our agenda and what we're going to be doing with our time today. You know, first off, we're going to start off with, you know, why are you here? What have we seen in the nonprofit space leveraging DocuSign? Also, you know, what are some empirical data points that we have seen from the uh, processes that DocuSign has been most impactful for? What type of return on investment have our clients seen? Next, third, probably the most fun part is going to be our live demonstration showcasing a few ways how your organization can be using electronic signatures and DocuSign. We're going to recap, have a few Q&A. And then lastly, we're going to give you the QR codes and the ability for you to take advantage of this 40% off discount code through TechSoup. So Ben, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, why are we here? This is always fun. And Ben, go to the next one here if you wouldn't mind. You know, not all nonprofits are created equal. Some bigger organizations have billion dollar trusts. Some smaller organizations are stretched thin, living grant to grant. You know, that, that being said, there's one common denominator between all nonprofits. It's this incredible motivation to drive your mission in the most effective and efficient way possible. You know, over the last few years, all of us have needed to adjust to the new normal. Program managers are asking, how can we be most impactful as possible, even if our staff and clients need to work with us remotely? Also, with the current financial markets coming down from their all-time highs, you know, fiscally-minded folks are asking, how can we continue to provide stellar services, even if our budget and capital is stagnant or even less available? So great news here for y'all. We're here, DocuSign. We're here to evangelize the successes of our nonprofits that have found a lot of impact in moving forward with the digital approach. Because if we're starting with the outcome piece, you know, most folks come to us with an archaic business process, usually stuck in paper. DocuSign quickly digitizes that process, the workflow, and the impact is extra productivity for your staff and also cost savings, hard cost savings in paper and time spent working these processes. Also, with these workflows being digital, we're going to be able to automate a lot of the downstream workflows in the ways how they touch hands, providing, again, increased staff bandwidth and improved client experience. Lastly, in the age that we're in today, you know, security is paramount, right? What type of strategies or processes do you guys have today that are keeping your most private security private and very secure? Next slide, Ben, if you wouldn't mind. Kind of the overarching piece of why you know, I came to DocuSign too, I was with a business that was heavily paper-based in which this workflow and this kind of uh, snake-like process here starts with manual paper processing of preparing agreements, working collaboratively, maybe in an office, putting together a document, having to scan a few documents together to just email it over to someone to sign it. When the person had to sign it, you know, they had to have a printer, a scanner, fax machine, or had to come into the office and fill out that paperwork by hand. And when it's being filled out by hand, can you even read the handwriting? You know, I, I don't think you could read mine. And when these processes are being workflowed, you know, there's actions being done on them. You know, meaning, hey, are, do we actually need to take a payment during this process when we're taking in the agreement? Do we need supporting documentation? How is that all organized? And lastly, you know, a lot of folks are using the filing cabinet. You know, there are fireproof filing cabinets but you're not really able to do anything digitally with those processes or provide the visibility into the paperwork into the future for folks who may be working remotely. Next slide, if you wouldn't, Ben, wouldn't mind, Ben. So this is DocuSign's Agreement Cloud. We have a ton of different technologies, features, and products to make sure that we are interacting and digitizing all steps of that prepare, signing, acting, and managing workflow. And that's what we're here today to talk about is that DocuSign, we are the electronic signature company. We're actually a verb. Can you DocuSign this? But the hard part with our name is that sign, it's kind of a misnomer in DocuSign because we do so much more. And that's what today's conversation is gonna be about. It's gonna show you the art of the possible of what's gonna happen when you move a lot of these paper processes off of the paper and now into a digital accessible environment, making a much better client in interaction and experience 
while providing a um, high class security and certified product. And Ben, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, I'm gonna be introducing my pal Kim Olson to really talk through what we've heard in the nonprofit space from our clients and the return on investment they have seen. Thank you, Tucker. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. We're so excited to be here. Um, you know, I think our team is a little bit biased. I, uh, DocuSign is a global company. We serve a lot of markets, but I think you guys could probably get the drift from Kelly that our nonprofit team, um, we really enjoy working with our nonprofits and it goes back to the idea of that mission. And some of you may know, or you may not know that DocuSign has our own mission. It's called DocuSign for Forests. And uh, in this partnership with nonprofits, we want you guys to partner with us on our mission. Since 2003, DocuSign has saved over 2.5 million trees. And in that partnership with us, we want to help create a more sustainable uh, global environment. And then along with that partnership, we want to partner with your mission. Cal gave a couple of phenomenal stories that really touch us. And we feel like when we are partnering with nonprofits, we're joining you in that mission as well. So we know that during the pandemic, all of us had to pivot in huge ways. And we saw that um, in a huge way with our nonprofit partners, especially as it pertains to client intake and how they were serving um, their communities and their demographics. And so we were able to dive deep and collect some really important data as it pertains to um, when you move these processes, these manual processes to a solution like DocuSign. And I wanted to share some of those stats with you today. What we find is that there's actually an average savings of $36 for every agreement signed. You may think, wow, that's really high, Kim, um, and that's fair. But how we got to that number is not only those hard cost savings, you know, we print and we print and we print and we've done it forever. And we sort of forget, wow, we pay a lot of money for ink and paper every month. And so if we can help eliminate some of those hard costs, but especially some of those soft costs like employee productivity, it really adds up. And $36 per agreement is a lot of money. And we want to help you save that. The other is that turnaround time. And Kel spoke to this in her introduction. Our main goal is to help you guys serve your clients better, get these people into the programs quicker. We are finding that when you move these processes and these workflows to a digital solution, 82% of these things get signed the same day. And that's simply about meeting your end user where they're at. And most of them, and, and this is true no matter what demographic you serve, don't have printers anymore. So it's actually quite a big ask to say, hey, I'm going to email this to you. Can you print it out, fill it out, scan it, and send it back to me. Um, I think most of those people are making a trip to a FedEx or Kinko's that day because we just don't own printers like we used to. And you know, knowing a lot of the demographics some of you serve, they don't have access to computers or an internet, but a lot of them still do have this. And DocuSign is 100% doable from start to finish on a mobile device. And then this is really the big one, and we're going to spend a lot of time here. Um, 128 hours of staff time per month are saved. And I was reading through the chat at some of your guys' answers, and um, I wanted to share a couple of them. You know, what would you do if you had some of that time back? Deb said she would increase outreach in her community. That's huge. Get more people involved. Marta said she'd complete all those other things that pile up as a result of her still chasing paper. And we all know that you guys have, most of you in your position, you wear a lot of hats. And so if we can give you time back to, you know, get some of those other tasks completed, we know that's huge for you. Jamie said, I would spend time fundraising. Heck, that's a big checkbox for a lot of you. How are we getting the funding we need to serve our programs? And then I would say the majority of you just said, I would do something I really love, like go on a hike or read a book or hang out with my friends and family. And I know all of you working in the nonprofit space, that is a non-negotiable. You need to refill your tank so you can complete your mission and serve your people. And we wanna help you do that. Ben, you can go to the next slide. Um, we're gonna be sending this deck out after, so I'm not gonna spend a ton of time, but on the left, what you're seeing is just a lot of the areas broken down. 
um, of where you sort of get a lot of that time back um, and the important parts of moving to digital signature. But I wanna focus on the right here because this is what we found when we asked our nonprofit partners, hey, like what are the most painful parts about getting client and um, intake and program management done when you're doing it manually? The first one is securely collecting and storing this information. A lot of you guys serve um, demographics where there's personal health information. You need a system that's HIPAA compliant. You need to be able to check mark the box of security and compliance. And when we're sending emails and scanning and attaching, we just quite simply cannot check that box. DocuSign wants to help you do that. Number two was finding which forms need to be included. Let's be honest, things get lost when there's paper shuffling around. And that is just another time suck of having to, to reach back out. Hey, I can't find this. Do you mind sending it to me again? And it's also not a great white glove experience for your end user as well. And the third was just getting clients to sign the forms. And I know if these cameras were on, I'd probably see every single one of you nodding your head like, yeah, this is a painful process when we do it um, in a manual way. And it's unbelievable when you make it easy, how it really sort of transforms that whole situation. So we're gonna um, pause here. We'd like to uh, take a little uh, poll right here. So Ben, if you click to the next stage, I know Aretha is gonna, um, kind of give this poll to everybody, but we want to know, for those of you guys on the call, what departments at your organization would benefit most from electronic signature? So we have program management, finance and operations, human resources, fundraising and development, or all of the above. We would love to kind of see some of those come in. And as you guys are filling that out, um, Ben, you can click to the next uh, slide. We wanted to show you these are the departments where we've seen the largest adoption across our nonprofit businesses. And you may look at this slide and kind of have some aha moments. You may work in human resources. You may work in volunteer management. Um, like Jamie, you may be in your fundraising department. These are the specific use cases that we've seen nonprofits go. We have pivoted to a digital solution and it has been a game changer for our organization in these departments. Again, we'll be sending this slide out, but we almost always send this to our prospects to say like, hey, look at this and what are the ways that you can do it? Um, program management, no surprise, uh, a really, really strong front runner. Hopefully all of you guys can see the results of this poll. Um, obviously, all of the above is the number one answer, and, and, and that's right. That's not surprising because most of these departments need help. But what we found is in the last couple of years, program management and human resources have been the number two adopters of DocuSign uh, since the pandemic and just uh, really, really awesome results there. So with that, I have the pleasure of introducing our amazing solution engineer, Ben Crawford, and we're going to get to the most exciting part of this webinar, which is to show you how this tool works and how we can help partner with you. Ben, take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Kim. Well, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning to some of those. Um, again, my name is Ben, a solution engineer here at DocuSign, and I'm going to take us through uh, a couple of quick demonstrations here. Um, so I've handpicked a couple of uh, use cases that I think, uh, number one, I've just seen a lot in the non-for-profit space, um, but these two different uh, use cases are going to have a different theme, and I, I think this will be really helpful for you guys to, to see and understand how DocuSign can, uh, can help you further your mission. So number one, um, we're going to take a look at an energy assistance application. Now, if you remember Kelly in the beginning, she mentioned that we were able to help uh, this one particular organization uh, take that time turnaround time down from uh, 7 to 14 days down to 24 hours or less. So we're going to see what that looks like in action. And the main theme of our first example is how easy we can make it for your end users or your clients to not only provide uh, information, but to electronically sign documents. The second uh, example we'll see today is going to have a little bit of a different uh, theme. And we're actually gonna see how we can make your back office more efficient uh, using some of the tools that DocuSign provides. So without further ado, let's jump into our intake form or our energy assistance application. This is just a quick diagram uh, to show you kind of how we're gonna move throughout this example. The first 
place we're going to start is with Andy, our applicant, who's going to go out to the website and find a link for the energy assistance application. Once Andy completes that application, uh, a copy is going to be delivered to a program manager. Um, he or she is going to be able to open that uh, agreement, make any counter signatures, and process the uh, completed document. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. So again, I'm uh, my name's Andy, uh, applicant. I am on uh, my local uh, uh, community action programs website, and I'm going to look for the energy assistance application. And I see right here, there's a link that I can apply online. When I click that link, automatically launches a DocuSign form where it's going to collect some basic information. Now I'm going to put in my name and email address so that I can receive uh, completed copies of my uh, of my finalized application. But as I click begin signing, it's going to take me in here to actually uh, interact with the document and begin filling it out. Now I'm going to um, kind of talk about some of the form functionality as I move through this, but a couple of quick call outs. Number one, you heard Kim say it earlier, DocuSign is mobile friendly. For anybody who does not have a computer or a, uh, or a tablet for that matter, they can sign from their cell phones and DocuSign is mobile responsive. So we will shrink to fit the, the device screen so that it's very easy and intuitive for your signers. The other quick point I wanna make as well is DocuSign is ADA compliant or accessible for the blind and visually impaired. So if you're serving an audience that uh, might be using a screen reader to navigate on their computer, just know those work with DocuSign and they'll be able to have uh, the, the documents actually read out loud to them. Uh, but as we start to fill this out, first thing you're gonna notice, there's a combination of red and gray boxes on my screen. Anything that is outlined in red is a required field and I have to enter something in or I cannot submit this application back. So this should ensure you're getting fully completed uh, applications. Now we're gonna get down to the name section. So I'm gonna go ahead and start filling some of this out. Um, as I'm filling it out, wanted to uh, touch on a couple of features here. So the first thing we're gonna see, drop down lists. These make it really easy for you to put something like a state, a county, uh, anytime where they have a, a set choice to make, drop down lists make that very easy and intuitive. Zip codes, something else that DocuSign does to ensure that you get the documents back correctly the first time is we can validate for certain data. If you noticed I typed test in this box, it's telling me that's not a, a valid zip code and I need to correct that. Or again, I cannot submit this document back. Um, as we get down here to social security number, here's you know restricted or, or private data that we're uh, concerned with. Um, first thing I wanna mention is that DocuSign is uh, 256 bit encrypted. We meet all the different compliance needs. So when we collect this information, it is safe and secure. This is another field that will validate for the appropriate uh, type of data. So if I don't put in a valid SOCH, it's going to kick me back out and ask me to uh, correct that. Obviously the same can be said for um, the birthday field as well. We're gonna validate for uh, uh, a date to make sure it's in the correct format. And we're going to keep moving forward here. Okay. So now we're down to the next section. And I want to take a second here to kind of talk about how I make forms more intuitive for my signers. If you notice here on the right, I don't have any fields that I can fill in yet. However, if I start on the left hand side and I start to list another household uh, uh, member, it's going to come open and it's now going to require me to provide all the information across the screen uh, for this particular person. So um, once again, it's it's the form being uh, adaptable and changing as your signers get in there and start uh, interacting with the form. Now we're going to skip through a little bit here for the sake of time and I'm going to come down to this section. Um, another example of you know guiding uh, your signers down a path and kind of holding their hands as they're filling this out. Depending on how I answer these questions, different uh, um, um, fields are gonna come open on the form and require more information. All right, and we'll go ahead and answer no for the rest of these. Um, but again, you can see how intuitive this is. If I rent my property, it's gonna open up and ask me to provide my landlord information, but we own our home and we're gonna move forward. 
Now, for the section about the energy assistance, this form is asking for us to give some information and provide a bill from our gas company. So we'll select gas, throw in the gas company name and an account number. And now we're actually going to attach our gas bill. Now, the nice thing about this, if you're signing from your cell phone, you can just snap a picture. If you're signing from your computer, um, again, you can just upload any old gas bill, whether that's a PDF or an image. And the best part is that that gas bill is now going to be attached to this application. And when we get further on in the process, um, and the, the program manager is going to uh, process this document, they're also going to have uh, the gas bill as well. So I'm going to click here to sign. First time signing with DocuSign, you get a chance to adopt a signature. You can pick any of these styles here on the right. Or again, if we're signing from a, a cell phone or a tablet, you can just use your touch screen to sign uh, right there on your screen. Now, once I've signed it, we can uh, move this forward. So we're going to go ahead and click Finish. And that's going to submit my application back to the program manager. Now, as the program manager, a couple of things I'm going to be able to do. I can track all of my submissions by coming into my DocuSign inbox and just viewing my sent folder. And I can see the energy assistance application for Andy applicant right here. Now, this is going back to, uh, to, to my organization and anyone in this group is going to be able to countersign the agreement. So let's see what that looks like. Um, the people internal at my organization receive an email letting me know that there's a new energy assistance app. All they have to do is click review document. And this is going to allow me to countersign the agreement. Now, a couple of things here, and this is something um, I personally find very useful. If you notice, you can read every field on this document. So if you're used to having paper applications or paper forms where, you know, either someone is, you know, chicken scratching or not writing on the right lines, just know a DocuSign is going to be clear and concise. It's very easy to work with these forms once they've been filled out. But for us, we're going to come down to um, our section of the form here. We're going to select uh, which month this was processed in. And DocuSign can also do um, calculations. So for those in like the finance department or any other back office where you might have uh, reimbursement requests or purchase orders, just know that um, we can also handle some, some uh, you know, basic formulas and math as well. This is going to calculate my, my net income. While Ben's filling that out, I want to pause here for one minute so he can, you guys can follow along as he's filling this out. But there's a couple things that I hear repeatedly from my nonprofits when we show this part of the demo. The first is how incredible it is to have visibility into where your documents are. So when Ben showed, you know, that his first signer had signed and now it's time for the second signer, a lot of you say all the time, we don't know where this is or who this is sitting with. And we have to call and remind them to fill it out. DocuSign is going to do that for you. And you will always have 100% visibility into where these are in your workflow. That's a huge um, pain that we see solved immediately. And the second thing is when your end users are filling this out, if it asks the same thing multiple times, name, email, social, um, on all the forms, they only have to enter it once and it will carry out through all the rest of the documents. That's a huge time saver for not um, for your end user who are filling these things out and just makes it much easier to get these things back quicker. So I just wanted to call those two things out that as Ben's filling this out is the visibility is a game changer, the automatic reminders, and just the ease of use of getting these filled out. Um, lastly, if you guys have Q&A, it will be much easier for us to track it if you actually put it in the Q&A section of the webinar versus the chat. We want to just make sure we don't miss any questions. Okay, go ahead, Ben. Sorry about that. Oh, no. Yeah, thanks, Kim. Um, so yeah, uh, last thing I'm going to show before we wrap this example up is just that that uh, utility bill that um, we attached in the beginning is here as part of the package. So again, my uh, my organization that receives this back has the completed app along with any supporting docs that need to be attached. Okay, so just for a quick recap, we did an intake form. We were able to place this on our website so that the public or any of our clients could go out and access this on their own. 
they're guided through a very uh, structured signing process where they can't miss a field, they can't leave information out. So you're getting the right information and all of the information the first time around. Um, and then of course with DocuSign and, and our workflow, we're able to uh, pass this document around internally for any kind of back office signatures that need to happen. And then lastly, once everyone has completed the document, all parties are emailed a copy for their records. So even the applicant that filled this out is going to get an email with a link to download the copy of the application. All right. So let's tee up our second uh, demo here today. And we're going to look at, um, so kind of the, the reason I'm showing this one, and let me kind of back up for a second. The theme of this next one is how can I, how can I make the back office more efficient? So <clears throat> one of the things we hear quite often is that yearly, a lot of organizations either have waivers, company policies, uh, something that a telework agreement, something that needs to be signed by a large group of people. In our example today, we're going to pretend to be uh, a Habitat for Humanity, and we have volunteers that come in and work for us every year. But every year, they do need to re-sign the volunteer waiver form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take over as Andy Admin. I'm going to have a spreadsheet list of all of my volunteers and some information about them. I'm going to be able to upload that into DocuSign and send out a uh, individual waiver to each person. Each person is going to be able to sign and complete that waiver. And then we're actually going to do something with it after the fact. And this is where I think we'll really see some efficiencies. Once we've collected the signature, DocuSign is going to automatically export the documents to a folder in OneDrive. And it's going to uh, export the data that we collected on the form to a spreadsheet. So again, any kind of things that you do in the back office are now going to be easier because we're going to be able to uh, just give you some more tools there for your uh, for your um, toolbox. So I'm back inside of DocuSign. Um, I'm going to specifically look for my volunteer waiver templates, and I'm going to select that. Now, a template is when you take a repeatable form, you save it in your library, and you can use it over and over again, right? So I've already got this set up and ready to go. We're going to click Use. And this is going to take us through the process of sending this out. Now, a couple of options. We can, of course, do this one at a time if we just have one volunteer. But for us today, we're actually going to import an entire list of volunteers to send this out to. So when I click the Import List button, I'm going to get an option to uh, select a spreadsheet. I'm going to grab my volunteer waiver spreadsheet and upload it into DocuSign. Now, this is going to give us a chance to preview some of that data. I've got a list of volunteers, their email addresses, and we did have some information on file about them as well, like their address. I'm going to be able to do uh, very similar to a mail merge, and we're going to throw this data on the documents for our volunteers. So let's take a look. Um, one other quick thing I'll touch on here before we uh, go forward. Just uh, as an FYI, DocuSign can also be configured to send automated reminder emails. So if we send out this to a large population, just know that turning on automated reminders will take you out of the process and allow DocuSign to do all the follow-up with your signers. A quick peek behind the curtain here before we send it out, but as you can see, we've got our volunteer registration sheet. And we've got several DocuSign fields that need filled in. Now, clicking send. DocuSign is going to work its way through my spreadsheet. It's going to create an individual volunteer waiver for everybody on my spreadsheet. I'm also able to track that from our Manage tab once again by coming in here and reviewing the, uh, the bulk send that I just created. Now, this screen is going to automatically populate with every single waiver that was on my spreadsheet, and it's going to give me one view where I can see all the submissions and where we're at in the process. Let's take a look at one of these from the point of view of a signer. So I will, uh, I'm going to be Ralph Wiggum today, and I've received my volunteer waiver email. It's going to have my, uh, the organization's logo and branding on here. And all I need to do is click review document. Once again, it's gonna kind of take us through a guided signing process. 
Uh, only this time around, you'll notice that I have pre-populated this information from my spreadsheet. So this is also you know, a, a pretty big game changer when you think of some of your back office forms, uh, particularly HR even. Uh, if there's ever any forms that you need to do a mail merge, whether it's contracts, um, uh, performance reviews, uh, yearly compensation uh, uh, upgrades or whatever, those different documents um, typically require data to be placed on them before you send them out. Using DocuSign bulk send, we're able to do that. Now, last thing here is I'm going to go ahead and type in a, a birthday. Oops. And uh, put in, let's see, Ralph, Sarah Wiggum is his mom. Throw in a phone number. And we will be able to sign this volunteer waiver. Now, we're not going to finish here. I'm going to take us into OneDrive, and we're going to see in real time how quickly that this agreement and all the data gets stored in, in, uh, in OneDrive and into my spreadsheet. So Ralph has received and signed his waiver. And he's now finished. I want to pick back up here now as the back office team who processes these agreements, who have to actually take an action or do something on them after they're signed. Let's come into OneDrive. First thing we're going to do is come over to my folder that I'm dropping all these signed forms into. And we're going to be able to see, uh, again, as those are signed and completed, they uh, populate here in this folder. Once again, Ralph is the one we just signed. You can see that the uh, completed form is now signed and stored in OneDrive. And I also wanted to show that I am exporting that data to a spreadsheet. So if you look at this spreadsheet, I've got three submissions so far, and this will update as each, one, each person signs their form. But if we scroll over here to the right, what we'll see is all the data we collected, their address, their phone number, their emergency contacts, it's all listed out here in a spreadsheet so that number one, I don't have to open each document to review the information. And number two, if I need to copy and paste or transcribe this into another system, I can just do so directly from the spreadsheet. So um, this one went pretty quick, but again, I think it's a very powerful example you're able to create what's called a bulk send inside of DocuSign. You can send the same form or the same set of documents out to a large group all at once with a couple of clicks. The signing experience is the same. They're gonna be guided throughout the entire process until they uh, have finished and signed the document. And then where DocuSign really kind of picks up on the efficiencies is where we're gonna be able to export the signed documents. Those can go to OneDrive, SharePoint, Google Drive, Box, Dropbox, uh, you know, most of those cloud uh, repository providers. We're also able to export the form data, giving you an easy way to work with that data after the fact uh, and, and, you know, copy and paste it into other systems or just review it at a glance. Uh, but with that, that concludes the demo for today. I'm going to pass this back over to Tucker for a recap. Thank you so much, Ben. And, and team, isn't that exciting? Like how kind of intuitive and easy DocuSign is for yourself internally and also your clients. And you know, in a few slides, you'll see some QR codes and how to get in contact with us. You know, we are a nonprofit team over here at DocuSign and Ben is our solution engineer. So if you have any questions around the technology, have some forms that you'd like to pick our brains on, would love to see a live demonstration with your specific forms please reach out to us and let's schedule a call to kind of workflow and review those processes with you guys. Um, so Ben, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, you know, the cool part about working at DocuSign is that, you know, I am on the nonprofit team and I get to help out a lot of uh, folks, you know, increase and make an impact in their mission. Um, and the cool thing about DocuSign is that, um, you know, we have a world-class solution here that provides an amazing signing experience you know, which provides first class experience for your clients, volunteers, staffs, and donors. And the cool part as well in when people are signing, you know, they can be signing things from their cell phone via email or text message. Those documents come over responsive and accessible. So that's easy to view for folks that may have some sort of disability. Now also as well, you know, we're in the uh, market to really improve your internal and back office processes by, by providing automated workflows. And inside of some of our features, we have them natively built out to have conditional logic, specific routing orders, and provide different actions for different folks on the agreement. 
which will save a lot of time and effort and reduce that turnaround time for you to receive those agreements. And another great thing about DocuSign is that we're trying to empower you to work inside of the existing systems that you have. You know, being DocuSign, we're in uh, San Francisco, Seattle, Chicago, some of the big technological hubs. And a lot of the folks that we brought over into DocuSign have been folks at other computing services providers. And that's provided us a lot of partnerships. You know, we, we have over 350 integrations, including some of the ones that we showed today from the easy ones like Word, um, Google, um, Microsoft. Um, and the biggest thing is that we want to ensure that we are giving your team a digital approach to work in the systems that they leverage today. Um, the last piece that I'm going to talk about are the four tenets of, of DocuSign here is the security and compliance. You know, DocuSign is used by the IRS and a few other government agencies, you know, 15 of the top 15 top financial institutions in the world. Also, a ton of hospital and health and medical service providers. So understand that our architecture has to stand the test of time to work for those providers, but you guys are grandfathered in, maybe being a small mom and pop nonprofit organization, but you do get the security and compliances that come with that like HIPAA, FERPA, and other PHI or PII information security compliance. Ben, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide. With DocuSign's nonprofit program that you're receiving from TechSoup, yeah, you're getting 40% off, which is incredible. But also we have a few different success packages that are gonna help you and educate your team on how DocuSign works and get up and running as quick as possible. So you're gonna receive over the first 90 days an adoption consultant who's gonna be working with you on onboarding, setting up your DocuSign account, creating templates, enabling your users to be able to use DocuSign. Included in that as well is DocuSign University, which is one of our learning management systems that'll train some of your end users with self-paced webinars and classes, as well as the ability to interact with the community to learn best practices on how DocuSign works. Uh, another thing I wanna put in there as well, you're gonna be receiving an account manager like myself, Kim, any of our 60 folks on our nonprofit team that speak the nonprofit vernacular and want to see your success and want to see the impact that we can provide there at the organization. Lastly, you know, we are always on, we have 24 seven support here to help you with any technical issues that should, that may arise. Next slide for me, Ben. Let's talk about the TechSoup discount here and go to the next slide, Ben. So being an organization with over a million dollar operating budget gives you access to a few different products that we provide. And we're gonna be able to consult with you to find the right one that fits your needs. But understand that that's 40% off. And next slide here, Ben. We're gonna get to the point, oh yeah, that's it. So folks, there's a few QR codes on here. Again, we're always pushing people to use their cell phones, right? So if you wanna connect with us quickly, the top left QR code is gonna bring up an email that's gonna ask you for your information, what are you looking to learn about and connect you with our DocuSign team. That team understands the TechSoup promotion, but it's also gonna connect us with the nonprofit account executives like myself to educate you and understand exactly what you're looking to leverage DocuSign for. The QR code on the bottom is gonna take you directly to our advanced solutions platform or the pricing for TechSoup. In there it's $89 and that gives you access to 40% off DocuSign rates. So I'm gonna pause a second here, but feel free to snap a picture, get your email loaded up or go to the TechSoup website from any of these QR codes. And again, we're gonna be sending over this slide deck later. So if you don't have the chance now, not a big deal. Uh, we'll be able to give you this information in a sec. I'm gonna wait three or four more seconds in here. Perfect. And Ben, go to the next slide. This is what the TechSoup webpage looks like and where you're gonna be purchasing the admin fee. You're gonna click on the login button under advanced solutions and pay the $89 fee. That is gonna connect our team to reach out to you to schedule time to connect, review some of the different use cases that you potentially wanna use DocuSign for, gain an understanding of how many users or forms, documents, agreements that you'd wanna process through our system. And then Ben, next slide. Perfect. I think this is the point in which we're gonna get into the Q&A. So if anyone, if you have some time right now, have some burning questions that you'd love to have us answer live right now, please put it in the Q&A. And then we're gonna have some folks like myself, Kelly, Ben, and Kim answering for you live here. Hi, you guys, my name is Jackie Hayes. I, uh, I'm 
on DocuSense partner team, I work directly with TechSoup in our partnership. And I'm more than happy to moderate the Q&A if that works for everyone. Okay, so we've been going through and monitoring the, the chat feature as well as the, the Q&A. So try to submit all questions in the Q&A. We've been answering some in there. Um, I'm still happy to share them verbally. Um, so let's go through some of these questions. Let's start with, uh, I know there's a lot of questions around HIPAA compliance. Um, so uh, in addition, another question, you mentioned 256-bit uh, encryption. Does that meet HIPAA compliance? Kim, would you like to take that one? Yeah, um, the reality is, and, and again, we have a lot of supporting documentation. So per Tucker's, like if you wanna reach out, we can dive deep into some of these things and DocuSign provides such great supporting documentation regarding a lot of our um, compliance and whatnot. But um, basically what that means is that if there's a certification box, we can check it. And so um, I know one of the, the questions kind of was around specifically when you integrate into other systems, like are you still HIPAA compliant? So. Um, the answer is yes. Everything that Ben showed when you're entering into DocuSign's environment, you are now basically with that um, encryption and it really covers all of that information. Ben might be able to provide some more specific details. Um, so I'm going to actually pass it to him to see if there's anything else. But and yes, he just put our trust and security um, in the chat, and that is a great link to click on, um, and you'll find all the information there as well. Yeah, uh, Kim, just to add a little bit there, right? Um, DocuSign is is uh, meets most of the major certifications, so ISO 2701, SOC 1, and SOC 2. Uh, again, the data is encrypted um, in flight and at rest. Uh, it's safe on our servers. Um, we even have additional security we can put in place, like passwords or identity verification, to help further lock down that data. Perfect. Thank you both. Uh, next question. Let's get through some of these. Does DocuSign design the forms? Anyone can chime in if you want to. No. So the way DocuSign works, I can answer that one. Um, DocuSign works with your forms. So taking any PDF, Word document, image, Excel file, taking your own document and uploading it to our system. And then we apply DocuSign fields on top of it. So it gives you the the flexibility of not having to recreate all your forms. You just keep using the ones that you have. You just put them in our system. Perfect. Thank you, Ben. Next question. A lot of clients may only have a mobile phone and may be monolingual in languages other than English. Does DocuSign, um, is DocuSign accessible to these populations? Yes. Sorry, I'm answering all the questions. No, please. Um, rapid fire. Let's, let's get through them. Yes, yeah, so DocuSign, uh, the way that it works, when a signer launches the, the signature process, they click the link and it opens up. Whatever uh, language that their browser is in, so if you're Spanish and it's in you know, Spanish, all the DocuSign UI will translate. So the buttons, the next, the finish, all that will be in Spanish or whatever language. Um, the only thing that does not translate is the actual documents. So whatever language you upload your documents, into DocuSign, that's what they're going to stay. Perfect. Thank you for that. And just um, to clarify on the mobile accessibility, um, DocuSign converts when users accept, access the signer piece on a mobile. So it converts to an HTML. So there's no need to pinch and zoom. It's um, readable from a mobile device and mobile friendly. And, and Jackie, just to double click on that, that is what separates us from almost every other e-sign solution out there because the ease of use. What happens is that it's so easy to use. It's easiest for the people you serve and it also returns the documents that much faster. We have the quickest turnaround time out of anybody else for that exact reason. So thank you for pointing that out. Perfect, yes. Um, great, let's see. Can these forms be customized based on different address formats? Um, based on different address formats. I mean, yes, yes. I, I think I understand what you're saying. So like, for example, zip codes, right? Like if you're in another country, you might not have a zip code or something like that. Um, yes, they can, we can uh, take any kind of address and any kind of format. Um, the validation that you were watching me do with zip codes and birthdays, 
we can also uh, configure that to, to do different uh, data as well. So if there's a particular postal code or particular phone number format you're looking to, to get, um, we can build that into your forms. Perfect. Thank you for that. Um, and then someone asked, what tool was used to compose this form? I'm assuming that's regarding your, your demo, Ben. So um, clarify that is. Yeah, I think they were, I think they were both just PDFs. So I, I just took a, a PDF uh, um, document, uploaded it into DocuSign, and then I pulled my, my sign buttons over and placed them on the form. So I don't know if that helps. If, if, if not, let me know, we can clarify and, and, and get more detail. Perfect. Um, there's many questions about different integrations that DocuSign offers. I sit on our um, ISV partner team, so I actually manage many of our specific nonprofit uh, integrations. And so um, we have over 700 integrations to different systems. So likely systems that you are already using, DocuSign connects into and works natively. Um, there's a list on our website. However, some aren't published yet because they're newer. We're enhancing them, expanding to different products. So if you do have questions about integration specific to products you're using or evaluating, you can feel free to email the techsoup at docusign.com. I am a field, I'm also on that alias. So I see everything that comes through and can definitely speak to you directly about any integrations that you're interested in. Um, looks like, okay. Okay, a question about how DocuSign compares to a solution with Adobe, Adobe Sign specifically. Ooh, me, me, me. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, no, Kim, this is all you. This is all you. And and just to share, Kim is probably top on uh, um, our team uh, for bringing clients over from Adobe Sign uh, for the reasons she's going to share right now. So um, here's the deal, you guys. Like, there are a lot of e-signature vendors out there. I'm sure some of you either have them right now or you've tried different things in the past. And you know, I am never one to put down other companies, but we are having these conversations every single day with people that use different solutions. And so what I'm going to spit out to you guys right now is basically what I've heard from the people that have gone from using Adobe um, to using DocuSign. And so I'll tell you really the, the big value differentiators. One, and it's the number one thing I hear is this mobile device experience. That is a huge differentiator between DocuSign and Adobe Sign. And again, we saw it in the chat. We heard from a lot of you, like a lot of your people need to be on a device like this. And so to have a frustrating mobile experience is kind of a non-negotiable. Um, the number two reason is support. So DocuSign support is just out of this world. And um, what we hear time and time again is it's almost just like they sit on a loop. It's very hard to get someone on the line and the system breaks a lot. And so DocuSign has a 99.99% uptime, which basically means our system is always available when you need it. And so to not be able to rely on a system and have um, the system break is, is a deal breaker, if you will. There are a lot of different things that I could go into in terms of just functionality, things that we do when it gets more into complex workflows like conditional routing, signing groups, things like that. Um, but I would say that the, the third thing I hear most op, uh, often is just uh, as it pertains to templates and templates creation and that kind of thing. Again, we could go into the weeds with that, but these are the conversations that we love to have with you just about how our, um, how our platform differs and the value that we can bring to you. Um, I could go on for, for probably hours, but I'll stop there. Perfect. I appreciate it, Kim. Um, there's lots of questions around the licensing structure and how the, the how to activate the TechSoup discount with DocuSign Advanced Solutions. So I want to quickly share my screen here um, for everyone to see. This is the web page um, on TechSoup.com for DocuSign Advanced Solutions. Now, keep in mind the reason we're not able to share pricing of what the advanced solution directly to DocuSign would cost for licensing and subscription um, is because advanced solution consists of 
all of these different types of products that we offer. So depending on your organization's needs, um, it will differ in price. Also, I do wanna share just quickly, this $89 admin fee, this is a one-time cost to your organization to TechSoup. So you're able to connect with DocuSign, you know, Kim and Tucker and Ben prior to, to activating and purchasing this, this admin fee from TechSoup. Just to understand if this is a road you wanna go down, if, if this is, these solutions are the right fit, and then if you are wanting to move forward to, to purchase, you will be directed to activate the discount by purchasing the one-time $89 admin fee through TechSoup. Once that's completed, you will get a code you provide to DocuSign sales team to then activate that 40% discount on any of these products. Pricing will vary based on the, the products listed here because we have a couple different models. Um, someone did ask a question about what an envelope is. So I don't know if, if Kim or Tucker, you wanna take that quickly just to clarify um, our subscription model and what an envelope is. That'd be great. Yeah, totally. So an envelope is the carrier or the package for the packet of forms that are being sent out to the workflow of folks that need to act on them. So like for a new hire onboarding packet, let's just say, HR director pre-fills out some information on the forms before it goes to that new hire to sign off on. The, sign, the new hire signs off, up, uploads some attachments, some information, then it comes back internally to countersign. That three-step workflow and all of the forms included are included in one envelope being processed. So an envelope is that package that holds all of those documents and the workflow included. And there was one point that someone brought up as well about like, visibility into processes by some of the users and how do we provide you know visibility to folks who maybe aren't DocuSign users into certain processes. So let's take for example that HR process, the new hire onboarding packet. That HR person may be a group, maybe three or four folks that all need to interact on the same processes. They will have visibility into each other's processes because you set up and enable document visibility, excuse me, envelope sharing and visibility. But Finance may be a user on here. Student services or outreach also may be a user on DocuSign. They will not have access to any of those documents that are sent out by that HR team unless you enable the visibility. Second piece of that question was, hey, we may have an external vendor or an organization that needs to receive a copy of this. The cool part is in that workflow that you designed, right? That started from HR, went to the new hire, signed by an internal president or something. The next step in that workflow could be send a carbon copy to XYZ person, name and email address. And that again, can be a text message, can be an email, but it still provides the visibility to folks who are external of the DocuSign platform. Perfect, thank you. So I, I think we got the majority of the questions, I hope, listed in the Q&A function. If anyone sees any others in there that have not been addressed, feel free to let me know. We have two minutes remaining. so. Um, if there are any remaining questions, feel free to type them in the chat and we can get those before wrapping up here. Um, let's see. Other than that, any other comments? Any, uh, anything that speakers want to add here? I think I'll touch on one thing. It's the last question I saw in the Q&A. Um, just to make a clarification, many of you may have some users throughout your organization using DocuSign, which would most likely be what we call a DocuSign web account, which is they've gone straight to our website and signed up. What we have presented on today and a lot of the functionality that Ben showed specifically to integrations is for our commercial plans. And that's where you would follow the directions Tucker laid out with the code and and all of these things. And so what happens if you do have multiple users on a web plan, we can work to get everything moved over to a commercial account for you, which really sort of plays into our compliance conversation earlier, where you have one centralized account and you don't have a bunch of um, users kind of floating around there where you don't have access to what they're sending. Um, so that is something that you would definitely want to scan that code, get in touch with someone so we can look through and do a domain search of who are all the users that may be signed up on a web account. 
And with that, I don't know, Ben, if you are able to share that slide once more so everyone has the code. I know we're at time, um, so we can just end on that. So everyone has a way to get in touch with us if you think of any other questions or want to set up time to do a full dive into your use cases and organizational practices that we can discuss further. Yeah, there it is. Thank you all for your time and attention and great, great interactivity today. We so appreciate all you do. Perfect.